Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cyclocross Social Podcast. Today we will be taking a look ahead at the World Cup in Namur and I'm joined by Twan and Issa. Hello. Hey everybody. The World Cup in Namur marks the beginning of a very busy time in the cyclocross world, the Christmas and New Year's period. I think there's something like seven or eight races in the spanner of two and a half weeks, really a lot. So that's why we won't be making a preview for every episode. But as Namur is the beginning and it's a World Cup, we will be making a preview for that. But for the rest, we'll probably do it a bit as we did in the podcast for the Scheldekos. First, we talk about the race and then we just give a brief view about the following day and what we think will happen there. So that's what we'll be doing the upcoming weeks. But first, the World Cup here in Namur. The parkour is almost exactly the same as it was last year. I think uh, only a few minor changes, but the cobbled climb is still in it. And that means that the descent that actually crosses the stairs is also still in. What do we think about that, guys? I think it's, uh, it's, it's very good. I like the old layout, I have to say. Uh, but I think the new layout showed that it was very exciting. You know, we have to see how the weather will change that because, of course, last year we had a very muddy uh, edition and a lot of, you know, um, it was very slippery conditions and very hard to ride. You know, if if the rain is going to be as it is last year, then we're st- again going to have a good race, but we don't know how it's going to be if it's a little bit less uh, muddy and less slippery. I just hope they will do a better job of um, making the stairs rideable. Uh, Last year it was very tricky to say the least. Um, I I think uh, if if they can nail that it uh, will be a very exciting day. Uh, And let's hope for some uh, fair racing. About the weather, the current forecast is dry going towards the race. But on race day itself a forecast of rain. And we all know what that means for the parkour of Namur. So indeed, we should hope that they do a bit better job of covering those stairs. Because last year, you could really see them duke, duke, duke down the stairs. And a few riders got a few, pu- a couple of punctures there. So we should hope that that's a bit better. But I think we should be in for an exciting race here. Who do you guys see as the favorite or favorites? Because the first name that come to mind are Vanderpool, Pitcock, Isabeet, Arts. Yes, I mean, uh, for, the, for by the men's uh, race, I think Van der Poel, out of the five years, uh, five last editions of, of Namur, Van der Poel won four of them. Um, so I think he likes Namur, and I think if the conditions are going to be a little bit dry and not that muddy and not that slippery, I think that Van der Poel is really the guy that might stand out, actually. Um, he already had two races under his belt. He did now some specific training, I think. So for him, I think he will be motivated to win again in Namur. So in my opinion, he would be the main favorite alongside uh, Pitcock, of course, who you know really showed uh, that he is uh, a main contender for such a race. Yeah, I think for uh, this week we can look to the people that did well last week in Gavre. Uh, it isn't, of course, an exact match of parkour, but it's the same type of parkour. And uh, I think the uh, top four there, uh, definitely amongst the contenders. And then, uh, yeah, we, we can really see, uh, expect similar people at the front and uh, throughout the race as we had last week. I think last week was really a turning point in the season or for Pitcock, the podium and then the win. I think we will see um, Pitcock at the front for sure. Last year he got fourth here. I think he can do better this year. I think he will definitely be up there. Arts, Van der Poel, I'm not too sure about Arts. I think he's a beat if he has a, if he has a better start than he had in Gavre, he will be at least in front of Arts, perhaps being up there with Van der Poel and Pitcock. But... It really depends on how tough the parkour is because if it's muddy, I really give Pitcock a really good chance. Don't forget, a couple of years ago, he fought uh, with Isabit here for the win in a muddy parkour here in Namur as well. But I think if it's dry, indeed, Isam is right, and I think that would benefit Vanderpool. But if it's more muddy, I think Pitcock and the Arts will be slightly, or uh, Pitcock and Isabit will be slightly above Vanderpool and the Arts. Yeah, true. And, uh, you know, for Arts as well, it, it's going to be interesting to see how his confidence will be in the descent again. Of course, last year, he of last edition, he had a uh, a terrible crash there. 
um, when we had a pr- pretty tense race against Van der Poel, who for first time actually or second time in that in, uh, in that season showed a little bit of weakness. Um, but I, you know, it's 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 going to be interesting to see how that how that descent will will be for everybody. To be honest, because it was a pretty a hard descent. It was where you could lose a lot of time uh, and also gain a lot of time if you uh, took a lot of risks. Um, so. That's that's really going to be a crucial part. With of course the couples, which um, which had a lot of which made a lot of trouble for a lot of drivers. Then a name we haven't mentioned so far is Wout van Aert, the only guy that was able to beat Van der Poel here in the last five years. What do we think he can do? He's coming back from uh, some training camp in Spain. Yeah, I mean, I mean for Van Aert, it's. Um... It, it's it's also a race he really likes. Uh, he won it also uh, once already in his career. So for for him, it's going to be known territory, and I think the climbing will suit him, especially if it's going to be drier. Uh, for him, it will be a, a very good race, and but it will be hard to see if if his training uh, camp really hampered him uh, in in terms of shape for this race in particular, uh, because we don't know how the intensity was and what he actually trained in that training camp. Yeah, it will be interesting to see what he can do upon this return. Of course, he um, did, did quite well uh, in the uh, first few races that he had, but uh, wasn't quite able to um, excel yet and uh, to really uh, get uh, on the top step of the podium. Uh, I, I wouldn't expect that either for Namur, but I think he'll certainly be battling uh, somewhere near the front and uh, he'll finish in the top five, I would bet. I think Van Aert, it will be a big question mark here. I think he could play a decisive role in the race as well. He's always somebody that keeps on riding. But at the same time, I think he's the guy that Van der Poel fears the most, perhaps because of the history. So I think that if Van der Poel is in a group at the front with Aert, Isabit, Pitcock and Van Aert, I think he will be mainly focusing on Van Aert, thinking, ooh, this guy has beaten me here and perhaps that will give opportunities to others. Yeah, it it definitely could. Um, of course, it is a very tough parkour, plenty of spaces to pass. So it, it would take a lot in order for him to throw away, throw away the race there. But it, it is definitely possible. I think he's professional enough to not get let the rivalry like get ahead of him, and I don't think that they really dislike each other. But I was more thinking maybe if he's focusing on Van Aert and maybe like if he, Van Aert is in second wheel goes to sit in the wheel of Van Aert something like that that perhaps something could change that Isbeet could open a smaller gap and uh, Van der Poel needs to react or something but at the same time if Van der Poel is the strongest on this parkour actually it doesn't matter who is the strongest the strongest rider will always win here in my opinion yeah 9 out of 10 times the strongest will win here and um, I think that the rivalry um, at, at this point will not be that big because um, I think that, that Van Der Poel um, uh, experienced it himself last race that there is not only Van Aert in, in the cyclocross world, there are others to look out for and uh, I think that last race especially made him probably realize that he is still not in the shape he wants to be. Uh, and that he still has to look around him with the likes of Isabi, Tonarts and Pitcock, uh, who are very close and very near him in terms of shape, in terms of condition. So um, I don't think the rivalry will play a role. Um, and to be honest, Na- Namur is really a race where you, um, where you can't actually look at other riders. You really have to focus on yourself. You don't have to... Um, overestimate yourself that can be a real danger at this at this race because it's so tough so you really need to uh you really need to you know put everything uh together and have a good first lap have a good second lap and just get through the race with a good rhythm um i think that's the best the best way to do this race then what about the leader in the World Cup? Michael van Tournout, he won the first round in Tabor, but after that, still second place in Boom. but last weekend, 8th and 6th, it's not the best results. Do we think he can bounce back and keep on to his lead, or will perhaps someone like Isabit or Van Aert take over the lead? I think the fact that we haven't really mentioned him uh, kind of says enough how we think of him. Um, I-, I think he could keep on to his lead. Um, th- this would mostly be... If uh, Easy Beat isn't able to get uh, to that winning position, so then he would 
only need to finish somewhere around uh, 6th, 7th place, which I, I think is realistic. Uh, he hasn't performed as well as he had in those uh, two weeks where he was so good and he, where he was able to take those victories. Um, and, and I think uh, we'll see more of that. He'll uh, probably, he will be in the race for a top 10 place, uh, but I think keeping his uh, World Cup lead mostly depends on Easy Beat not winning. It, it will be very tough for him. It will be a hard task, but I think that um, you know he's going to wear that jersey. He's going to to stand there in the front, and you never know. A jersey does a lot of things to a person, so maybe he will be he will be better than his than his last week performance because I think that last week performance, if you really are only going to look at that, yeah, then for sure we can say that's going to be going to be tough for him to defend that first place, but. At a good day, Van Turenhout is definitely a guy to watch, especially if it's going to be a little bit drier. I think the climbing suits him. Um, so I think a real outsider for sure for this race. The number three of last year's race was Corne van Kessel. Personally, I don't expect really big things for him. I expect him to be in the lower top 10 places, somewhere outside of the top five, like around 6th to 10th, somewhere with the likes of... Thomas Main, someone like those guys, I expect those to be there, but nothing big to expect from the number three of last year, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would second that opinion. Um, he really hasn't quite been at the level uh, that he has had over past years, I think. Uh, mostly a consistent top five rider, especially when the big guys weren't there. Uh, he, he wasn't quite able to do it. And uh, uh, as you said, I, I think... A 6th to 10th place is where we will be seeing him in the uh, results at the end of the day. Let's then go ahead and make some predictions here for the men's race before we go on to talk about the women's race. Um, yeah, If I go first then, I, I think that um, I, I, I would go for a bounce back from Vanderpool. I think he will he will bounce back from his loss in, in Gavre and... Um, I think he's very eager to win a race. He's always eager to win a race, but I think he's more than ever uh, for this race. And I would say that Vanderpool uh, will win then. I think the man from last week in Gavre will keep on flying, and uh, it will be Tom Pitcock that takes uh, the World Cup in Namur. And then I will go with his rival of the under 23 years, Eli Izerbiet. Let's then talk about the women's race. I don't really know if there's a lot to discuss about the women's race actually because we've already said the same things quite a few times in the previews and now really it looks that Brandt really is the clear front runner of the field. So do we think that if Brandt doesn't make any mistakes she is on track to get just claim another victory here? Yes. <laughs> I, I think that um, the last two years Brandt has won this race and um, I think that Arguably, she was in a less she was in a less position in a in a less position to to win that race, and now she has been the front runner for a while. Uh, she's she's looked strong, so I I would say that Brandt will be the you know the clear favorite, and we will see who can surprise us. I guess. I th I think Betsma will be able to give her a fight um, on on a uh, climbing course like Namur. Uh, Alvarado will, I think, be uh, trying to get third place, and uh, yeah, I, I, if if I had to say one name, it would be uh, Lucinda Brandt indeed. Um, well, whilst I think Betsman will give her a good fight, I, I think ultimately she'll end up falling uh, just short like she did in Gavre, just uh, 10 seconds. I agree, I think this is definitely Brandt's race to lose with Betsma in probably in second. Worst would normally be up here for the victory, but she hasn't been the best uh, best form of herself the last couple of weeks, so I don't think she will be up there. We really saw it in Gavre that she was struggling. Perhaps it was a double weekend, but I don't expect too much from her personally. But I do expect things from Clara Honsinger, number six here, six here last year. This year, I think she could be in for a podium. Last week, she was fourth in Gavre. This parkour is maybe even better for her than Gavre. Yes, um, and I, I think that she, you know, if she's going to ride a smart race like she did in Gavre, and I think, you know, uh, normally she will be doing that, 
that she actually might be a, an outsider um especially if i think in my opinion if it's going to rain a little bit more if it's going to be a little bit more muddy slippery i think that that brand actually might be uh more beatable than if it's going to be dry um for both betsema but also for an home singer that she can you know uh close that gap and be you know with the front runners uh we have to wait and see if she can uh, do that performance again because we don't have to forget that last week was of course a double weekend and then on top of that it's Havre so you will see a little bit bigger differences so we have to see if she's able to um, to double that performance what she did last week um, but you know, she can actually be a, a, a big outsider for this race for a podium especially yeah, I think at the very least she should be getting a top 5 in Namur here. And uh, a podium challenge is definitely possible here. Uh, we saw how close she came last week in Havre. And uh, she did uh, very well here in uh, the previous edition as well. So I'm really expecting big things from her. So let's, let's hope that we'll actually see them. Perhaps a last name that I would want to put forward is Avi Richards. She won here three years ago already. Last year she was fourth, if I'm not mistaken. So I think, I mean, normally I would say I think she can be up here and compete for a good result. But the, so far she hasn't been getting the best results. She got 18th and 14th last weekend. First two races. Okay, so... Maybe she will be better, but I don't think she will be up there for a really high place. But I do think she can end in the top 10. Too. Yeah, I think I think a top 10 would be reasonable. And uh, especially that in her second race already, she's 14th in Kavre. Um I think, you know, it really helps if you have some races under your belt. She already has two going into a weekend. You did some training. Uh, you get the rhythm a little bit back. So um, definitely... Someone to watch for a top 10, yeah. Yeah, I would definitely hope so. Of course, a very talented woman. Uh, and uh, she is capable of more than the 14th place she showed in Gavre. Uh, expecting a solid top 10 here. And uh, hopefully she can build on that toward what probably is her goal of the season, uh, the World Championships. Do you guys perhaps have any other riders that you want to put forward for a good result? Or do you think we've covered it all? Well, it's, it's interesting to see how Alvarado will be, I guess. Um... Uh, if she is going to be able to uh, get closer to um, to the front, uh, I mean she had some she had some good weekends in the beginning of the season. Seems she had a little uh, touchback. Uh, now she's moving a little bit forward again. So you know it's interesting to see what she will bring. Uh, and it's also I think for Sana Kant, we'll see if uh, she will be able to uh, do a good result in this race. I think also Eva Lechner, very interesting one, uh, back from injury last week in Gavre, able to put in a top 10 performances, has done well here in the past, uh, so maybe she can uh, challenge for another, maybe top 5 place, probably top 10. Good one. Then I think we can make some predictions here for this race, and I will go first, so I can go with Lucinda Brandt. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair wow. enough. I gotta take the host privileges sometimes, right? I mean, I usually go last, so I think I figured this is about my time to go first. <laughs> Fair enough. Then uh, I'll go second and take Denise Betsma as uh, the person I think is uh, basically the only person that can really challenge Brandt here for victory. Ah, um, I, I, I will go. Okay, I, I I will make it interesting and hope for for a non-Dutch win, and uh, let's just go for for Clara Hongsinger. Let's see if if she can bring the victory home. It would be really nice to see first non-Dutch victory of the season, but I think Brandt is simply unbeatable here. Oh, l let's hope. We can hope. We can hope for an interesting race, and we sure will do that. If you're wondering where you can watch a uh, fingers crossed interesting race, make sure to check cyclocross.social.com. And then I will thank Twan and Isan for joining me today. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for hosting. As said in the beginning, we'll be providing you with a lot of podcasts during this Christmas and New Year's period about a lot of cyclocross. So make sure to follow the podcast to get all the latest podcasts in your 
uh, box or of youtube or whichever audio platform you're listening on and then i wish you guys a good weekend and we will be back on monday with a podcast about the world cup in namur goodbye